what's going on YouTube Q back here again with another video for you today's video I'm here with a car that I often talk about but I never got the drive we're here with the all-new Cadillac CT4 V Blackwing We've got a few options on here and we're gonna take this out for a spin in a minute but this is the grown man's Camaro we got four doors this one has a twin turbo v6 so it's got about 472 horsepower and we're about to utilize that in just a minute here got to put some gas in before we get going before you sneak away from this video don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell browse the channel let's jump into it take a look at this thing before you hop in here so this has got the track package here you can tell because we got the canards and not just regular canards these are carbon fiber along with the splitter too so that goes around the whole front so I love the way this looks I think it looks better in the front and then the back we got the carbon fiber splitter going all the way across down here the blacked out grill LEDs let me see if we can make those boys turn on real quick yeah so i like that. that's one of the cadillac signature they got going on for a few years just these cat eye type things oh got the ferrari beeping at us and then coming across the back we got the carbon fiber spoiler going on and that same thing going across in the back but let's listen to this ferrari real quick you don't get to hear a ferrari start up that often So we got the quad tip exhaust going across the back here and a little bit of criticism i like the back of the ct5v a little more than this but this still looks good just a little plain looking right here on the uh deck lid to me wish it would have something there but that doesn't take away from the car at all it's just something that i wish and we got the black side skirts coming along down here turn signals in the side mirrors you can see some forward camera or forward collision stuff going up here. Shout out to City of Cars for letting me get behind the wheel of this thing. So cityofcars.com, go check them out. This vehicle is for sale and it's about 68, 69,000 for that CT4V Blackwing. It's quite loaded, but let's get in here for a drive. Let's check out the interior next. This interior has the white contrast stitching going on. Got the AKG audio. You know, I love my upscale audio on my cars. Got the V badge. This is some kind of me metallic element right there going on. And these seats. Got the microfiber inserts. The sport seats. I like this design of the seats. That's different. We got the white going along the edge. Microfiber inserts on the inside of the seat. But this part right here is leather. And we got the white and red stripe going down the middle with the stitching. And this is the center point of the steering wheel. Got the red there, matches the exterior of the car. Carbon fiber again on here. And I see more carbon fiber. And this of course is the six speed manual. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be driving it right now because that's, that's my bias, that's what I like. Carbon fiber here on the middle tray. Something shallow can go right there. I don't know what you would put in there. A couple cup holders. Micro suede up on the shifter, on the shift knob, Alcantara steering wheel, got some more stitching across the dash, a little bit of, what is that, is that rubber? So let's check out the trunk space while we're back here, seeing what kind of practicality we got, man, that's a wide opening. This is a pretty big trunk on a small car, got the Hellcat making noise, also available for sale. And these seats do fall down. Got the 60-40. Hopping into the back seat, sitting behind myself. Let's see what kind of practicality we got. Sitting behind myself, a little tight back here. I'm about 5'11", and my knees are in the seat. They got these little cutouts to where you can get more knee space, and that definitely helps. But um, 
Also got the V embossed in the seat. Suede on the back of the seat, which is a nice touch to it. And like this right here is for like a, a harness you can put through there. So that's nice, especially for a Cadillac. But yeah, it's not much to see back here. More black stitching in the, oh, is that hardest? I don't know, man. Looks like leather up there, leather on top of this plastic. That's, that's GM, but this right here is soft wherever you would need to touch so I'm not going to gripe too much about that got a couple speakers in the door can't get my feet out from back here they stuck under the seat it is tight back here so if you got taller adults you might want to step up to the CT5 E Blackwing and that's the one I really want but this car is about it's price where my ZL1 is so is this thing worth ZL1 money do you get that type of performance so the horsepower is down and it weighs about 3900 pounds ZL1 way back there has got 650 and these are both based upon the Alpha platform which is one of the best I've ever been in. It's highly, highly praised by a lot of automotive journalists and rightfully so. And it's, it's a great chassis so I'm going to see what it's like with this powertrain. Before we hop in and drive let's do a walk around of the car so you all can see it from all these angles. And these tires are small for a performance vehicle used to seeing giant tires but these are only 18s and this is the top of the line V right here car got a few things memory seats got the mirrors that fold trunk button took me forever to find this parking button storage in here is okay it's a little little tight in here but it is a small car so let me start it up for you all so you can hear what it sounds like inside the car foot on the brake and clutch seats always move I already set it to my setting I'm going to be driving on track mode after I get gas. And you also got this V mode button right here. What that thing do? Oh, we turn the traction control off with that. I don't, I don't think that's what I want to do right now. Oh, we got race two. Okay, this is kind of like when I double tap that uh, the traction mode in my Camaro. But in here, we also got the drive modes with the buttons right here. Oh, they got rev match. Turn that crap off. As I change the modes, I'm going to go up to track mode. And as you change that, it automatically comes up with all the modes on here. So everything's to the extreme. PTM is not. So steering, suspension, all that good stuff. What is PTM? Can't think of that at the moment. But this screen looks identical to what's in my Camaro. It's just a Cadillac overlay on it. It's probably the same radio same manufacturer like all this stuff on here you can change the driving mode customization or you can change the v mode my mode but i'm going to be driving in track mode so this is all going to be maxed out so i can get the most of this and then we'll do like a normal driving like that they got physical buttons in here let me test out the audio real quick and i'll, I'll tell you all my feedback on it so the audio in here is pretty good so it's sound clear it goes high has some nice bass to it and this screen is a little bit on the smaller side for what I'm used to seeing in these newer cars. And we got the climate buttons down here. All buttons. I know the Cadillac Q system, Cadillac user experience, that was massively criticized for like all the touchscreen functions at one point in time. So you don't have to deal with that here. Let me turn this heat up in here. Oh, this is like a toggle switch. So I turned it up because we are not warm outside. And I'm gonna set that to sync. Heated steering wheel in here. Oh crap, we got this big digital cluster up here. So let's see what else we can customize. Phone, yada yada yada. So that's the presets. What's this toggle right here, dude? Oh dang, that's performance traction. All right, so I'm not gonna be messing with that because we're dry out here, but we're kind of cold. And we got our lane keep assist. 0 to 60 timers. Can't even do that without gas. 
Also, we got a wireless charger going on up under here. But yeah, that's about it. How we get to reverse it's to the right and down. Oh, the right and up. I'm sorry. I should know that. It's the same as the Camaro. Pretty clear screen. And here you can get the guidelines to turn with you. So that's cool. All right, we're ready to shake, rattle, and roll. So this thing, it has the easy exit. You can turn that off as configurable, but it has easy enter and exit. So once you start it up, it's gonna put the seating position into your liking. But for me, I got number two, because this ain't my car. So it goes to the first slot. Buckle up. I was trying to find the heated and cool seats. I could not find that stuff, guys. So let's just get in here and drive. And this steering wheel is the electronic telescoping, tilt and telescopic steering wheel. Let me go into track mode. Cause this car does the burbles as well. So I really want to hear that coming from this six cylinder. And uh, it's got rev match, which I don't like that on. So I'm not going to drive with it. So we're off. See what the sound oh my god so you see it's yellow that means the rev match is on i'll press it again it's white that means it's off it's gonna be all me that sounds pretty good on the inside too i like to be able to hear my cars so let's go on our standard route <laughs> Got some get up to it. Oh, dang. <laughs> Back in, tried to get out. So, these are performance tires. So, let me slow my roll. Fix this bag real quick. Just toss this camera bag to the floor. All right. And we're off again. So, can't be doing maneuvers. It's like 50 degrees outside. Let's see if we can make a verbal. Track mode. This V6 sounds pretty good. I don't remember the CTS or the ATSB sounding like this. So they did some work on here. And even though we're in track mode, it still handles really well. Like handling and soaking up the bumps. That's one thing about this magnetic ride control. It soaks up a lot of imperfections in the road really well. Like really, really well. I like the size of this car, even though it's on the smaller size, like it's, it feels real good to like toss around. Like my Camaro is small and tight, but there's no room. This gives you the added room in here. And speaking of the powertrain, like it's pretty good. Like it's not ZL1 fast, but I think this, for the power that it does have, it handles it really well. At 3.6 liter it normally doesn't sound like this so they did a really good job tuning this to sound good acceleration is quite good too minor gripe already this uh <laughs> the turn signal feel kind of cheap man like it doesn't inspire confidence and just hit the turn signal the camaro it has a real solid feel i noticed that with my blazer too like I don't know how you can design one that feels kind of hollow. But it's downshift. Crack the window, see if we can hear it a little more. Drop it here and disappear. 
disappeared. visibility is a little bit limited uh, let's hop on to the highway see what the power is like and handle it <laughs> suspension on this car is so good man starting to drive these cars I'm starting to appreciate handling a lot more than just straight line speed and that's always kind of been my thing but it really shines in this car I think I'm going to change to a different driving mode put it in comfort or tour mode too close up on somebody it turns yellow yeah that means I'm tailgating when both of the lines are green that means I'm in the middle of my line if it can detect the line so that's a good thing to have the head up display does it not have a head up display let me see don't think we have a head up, heads up display in here so tour mode is going to take all the steering the engine pretty much everything down Let's see how it feels. Let me go back to track mode and see what it feels like. Because that brake is real firm. I want to see if I can feel it by just... Now you can't really tell where you're parked. See how it does these bumps in the tour. Like riding on the cloud. Let's see if that was verbals I was hearing earlier. Let me go back to track. about this car that the reason why they chose the v6 as opposed to the v8 because it has similar power to the uh the lt what is that lt1 so you would think they would put it in here but i heard they went with the this engine set up with the v6 because for better weight balance so it's a longer engine therefore they can distribute the weight better 
Oh yeah, another thing I want to point out is these seats. Like you got some highly adjustable seats here. So you can, the, the lumbar on the sides, you can control that. And you can also do the lumbar on the bottom and also the middle. So it's highly adjustable and I can actually feel that as I'm adjusting it. The pops in here are obviously more subtle than they are in my V8, but they're like similar pops. Mine are just extreme because of the exhaust that I got. Shout out there, Marty. But yeah, I feel like you can get this to sound pretty good if you did get an exhaust system on here. slouch at all so this will make a great daily driver like if you want it all but you need the added practicality that you can't get in the Camaro or a Corvette this fits the bill right here and it doesn't have the sound but that's it it has the chassis it has a good powertrain and if tune is your thing you can go ahead and tune this to whatever levels that you like I'm pretty sure the aftermarket will take care of that but being overly critical like these these vents look and feel a little bit on the uh cheaper side it's a gm thing for you like a, a cheaper interior sometimes is what you get but these seats are great though they're they feel kind of firm too like this is a serious track car so would i trade my zl1 for this uh no because they're both about seventy thousand dollars high sixty thousand dollar cars but the ZL1 is just more extreme and that fits the bill. I'm about to get a daily car. But, uh oh, fuel is low again. But if I needed just one car, I would have to get something like this. Not sure if it would be this or the M2, but this has a lot of character. Definitely has steering feel. Like, I, this is a good, a great driver's car. And it doesn't really lack on anything. This is more of a performance luxury and with the bmw you get more luxury performance so they characterize or they they prioritize the sport in here and which i appreciate hopefully the market appreciates that too because this is a wonderful car and they've done it with this the ats v but i don't know if the sales reflect how great these cars are but if i were to get one my choice would have to be the CT5 V. Like I, that's a car that I lust after and have always lusted after. Like CTSVs are cars that I'm I'm always into, and this fits the bill. But it's a little small for my taste for a car that can do it all. Like the CT5 V would be the one for me. But that takes you up to a whole different price level. So there's that. I would probably still do it. These don't want to mess up these carbon fiber dive planes and canards and splitters and all that good stuff. But yeah, these cars are about equal. And this car does phenomenally on the track too. I think the suspension feels better in this car than on my ZL1. But it's an awesome car. Let me get up out of here and get my final thoughts. CT4V Blackwing. Am I impressed? I actually am, so I didn't expect it to handle better than my ZL1. It feels lighter, but I don't know what the weight to weight is. I thought it was 39, but it doesn't feel that heavy. So the magnetic ride control in here is better than my ZL1. And it's a more livable car, and it got the performance too. I would love the sound of a V8, but this V6, they, they took their time to make the V6 for the V8 people like me. Like, it sounds better. Of course, you can't really replace the sound of a V8 with the V6, but they did a really good job with this exhaust, and I hope that came out on video as well as I could hear it. So, this is a good-looking car, a great car, efficient, like it's more efficient than my ZL1 as well, and a great overall package. I think GM knocked it out the park. I, I would go as far as saying, like, it felt better handling just with the magnetic ride control. I don't know what the actual numbers might say, as far as the lateral G's that I pulled, but it's felt like a 
better handling car. It, it just feels really good, man. Like, honest opinion on it. Definitely enjoyed this, but I just can't get out of my ZL1 for one of these. Who knows, though, if the ZL1 was my one and only car, or if I were looking for both of them, I would have to go CT5V. That's just me personally. That's what I like, the bigger, the midsize. Like, cause the M5 is like one of my favorite cars. And both of these come with the manual. That's something that BMW only has one in the M3, and there's not a lot of luxury sports sedans that offer the manual. It might only be this and the M3, so that's it. And the CT5 V Blackwing is the only midsizer with one still, so that's why these went with me. So it's still an engaging car to drive. Got the experience on my gears. You know, I like doing that. So let me know what you all think down in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, browse the channel, and I'll check you all out in the next video. Peace out.